Brass Fax here. Today I'm going to be looking at my Sons of Liberty Gunworks AR in uh, 14.5. I'm not really going to use my traditional format, as this is an AR, and let's be real, there's not really too much to it, and everyone's done an AR video. You guys already know what's up. I'm going to hit you up on my thoughts on Sons of Liberty Gunworks and companies like it, and my case for buying nicer rifles like this over other cheaper builds. And then we'll wrap up on why, how I set up the rifle the way I did. On to the title. When I was starting out, not that I'm some kind of gun internet guru, but I do recall back on primary and secondary when Ma Mike Milhowski, the, uh, the owner of Sons of Liberty, was first popping up and his early threads. He was quite unapologetic, we'll just say. But a lot of the knowledge he dropped was impressive, and uh, he really seemed to know his stuff. So, not that I could necessarily BS check him, but you get the point. And I've been low-key following Sons of Liberty ever since, so when a cheap new inbox upper showed up for me, hey, I snatched it and here we are. A lot of people ask regularly, hey, why BCM? Why Daniel Defense? Why Sons of Liberty Gunworks over this X cheaper brand? It seems to be exactly the same or even better. The answer is quite simple, confidence. No gun you buy in the world is guaranteed to always work. All companies have lemons, and even the guns that do work and aren't lemons will sometimes get parts failure, premature parts failure. And the ones that don't get parts failure, they might have malfunctions because of improper shit. Sometimes life just lines up against you and your gun just shits the bed. These mid-tier companies, however, BCM, Daniel Defense, at least back when Daniel Defense wasn't too grand a pop, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, etc, etc, all exist in the realm of mitigating the above as much as one can be expected. Through knowledgeable gunsmithing, smart part selection, good QC, you get the rifle that has the highest chance of not only working out of the box, but continuing to function at 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and 10,000 rounds without experiencing an unexpected premature failure. This obviously costs more, right? It takes effort to mitigate this. I still ultimately test all my rifles for several thousand rounds until they enter my stable of go-to guns, and I recommend most people do the same, but it's not something everyone can realistically do. Do home builds work just as well at sometimes even half the cost? Absolutely. I have an Aero Franken gun as my go-to gun, and it's got 7,000 rounds in it. Works just as well just as good, and most of that was suppressed in full auto. But you know what else I have? I have an upper that used to be on the same exact rifle, with a ballistic advantage barrel, with a tiny undersized gas port, that only manifests itself well after a thousand rounds, and I begin to have issues locking to the rear, regular malfunctions, so on and so forth. The amount of headache, cost, and time it took to correctly figure out what was going on there, uh, and the fact that it took well over a thousand rounds to kind of manifest really speaks to the point of you don't know when a unverified rifle kind of goes to shit and for the record the gas port was very very small uh, i also had a smith and wesson sport that i got that once again was working fine up until like 2000 rounds i got it with a thousand rounds uh, that just one day the chamber just went to shit like it started gouging out rounds and started malfunctioning like crazy Smith & Wesson took care of me, and I don't think Smith & Wessons are necessarily bad rifles. But once again, it speaks to the fact that rifles break, and they break at inconsistent, er, inconsistent times. Working out of the box isn't a guaranteed indicator of long-term longevity. So I'm not saying cheap guns aren't bad or don't work. But what I'm saying is Sons of Liberty Gun Works, and others like it, create a product that respects what it's intended for, defending mine and others' lives. And they spend a little bit of extra to make sure they use the right parts and they check these parts for function, uh, reliability, you know, QC. These companies sit in a category between budget and Gucci, you know, Gucci with extra features and stuff, and give you as much as a manufacturer can a guarantee that a rifle will go bang now and well into the future. Personally, for me, a lot of times, unless I have a specific build in mind, that is often worth the extra two to three hundred dollars alone compared to the other brands. All right, that was my case on why you should buy 
built rifles over uh, builds. And specifically in this case, built rifles from uh, very reputable brands like Sons of Liberty Gunworks, BCM, Colt, so on and so forth. I don't really want to turn this into what brands are go to war versus what brands are considered hobby grade. I, I, I can't know for sure, really, honestly. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But I'm fairly confident with most people's experience and my own that Sons of Liberty Gunworks, in a lot of ways, is kind of like a, a new up-and-coming version of BCM, for the lack of a better term. Hey, time to look at the, uh, the rifle itself, kind of discuss why certain things are on it. Um, it's going to probably end up mirroring my 13.7 build video, because it's essentially the same setup. I just swapped out the internals of the upper, put the handguard back on, and uh, kept it as is. <clears throat> it's worth noting that um, this setup is kind of my review gun right now, so a lot of the stuff on here isn't necessarily optimal, uh, and I would prefer something else, but I'm reviewing a product, so, you know, it's on there. So. Also, yes, I know the irony of having a uh, video dedicated to Sons of Liberty upper talking about spending more for uh, quality, and then having an Anderson lower and uh, primary arms on top. I thought there's anything wrong, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, moving on. All right, as I mentioned, since I'm testing stuff, I'm testing the primary arms, one to six ACSS, ACSS, this is like their Gen 3 model, if I recall correctly, <laughs> whatever the new one is. Upper, as mentioned, Sons of Liberty guns work. Uh, moving forward, the handguard is a Geisley rail. I'll be real, the longer I own this rail, to the uh, the less I like it. The shape is kind of just weird. It's it's like a quad rail without the, the, the bumpy parts, the uh, the the, sec the slot sections. Uh, so it protrudes kind of like a plus, you know, and um, it's just harder to get a good grip on it. And you definitely need either, in my opinion, uh, handrail sections or a hand stop. It's kind of bad in normal weather, and then you get remotely any kind of water or something on it during like rain or something, and it's just impossibly slippery and almost useless. Uh, but that's technically true with most rails. It's just pronounced on the Geisley. Uh, it's also kind of heavy, though I do understand that that's because of the mount and the reduction uh, in flexings or the increase in rigidity for night vision uh, devices, which is a big selling point of the Geisley. That being said, I'm just not a big fan of it. Uh, though it does do its job, right? It allows me to flex on pores who dare spend less than $200 on a rail. Uh, so I guess I'll keep it on that note. Nah, it, it works fine. So I'm just too lazy to sell it, honestly. You can kind of see it's getting beat to shit, so it's also probably pretty hard to swap out anyway. Uh, up front... <clears throat> oh, man, God. Up front... Uh, Dead air, uh, standard flash hider, pinned, or actually just welded, not pinned, but that's good enough because this is a pretty hardcore weld. Um, I generally run this gun unsuppressed. The whole goal with this gun was to run unsuppressed. If I want to run suppressed, I'm going to go run a shorter gun. Uh, I don't really feel like a 14.5 works that well. Uh, suppressed just makes it unwieldy. So, flash hider because I don't like muzzle brakes on a primarily unsuppressed gun. Yeah, funny story with this thing, actually. You can kind of still see it a little bit. I um, tripped in the pitch black and speared a rock with this thing, bent out the prongs, had to squish them back together. Um, I'm kind of scared to put a flash, uh, put the suppressor back on here due to muzzle strikes, but uh, we'll see. Flipping this bad boy over, we got the HLX on a tape switch on an Arasaka mount. Arasaka mount definitely mandatory on something like a Geisley rail because this thing sticks out on the moon if you don't have it. This brings it much more in line and actually gets a very tight fit. HLX, haven't done a video on it. Big fan though. Uh, it's essentially a surefire dual fuel at like one third the cost. So for those that are thinking I'm kind of an elitist, no. Surefire has kind of dropped the ball on this one. I, I think this is almost as good as a surefire at one third the cost. And in some circles, from what I've seen, Man, those dirt dual fuels are kind of messing up. On that note, I'm buying a Surefire dual fuel to review. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Uh, I run a tape switch because this is primarily a daytime gun, right? So I want to be able to use the light if I so need it because I likely won't have night vision if I run this gun. If I'm going to run night vision, I run a different rifle. Um, 
it's worth noting this tape switch is fine it works uh but it's kind of nd prone that is negligent discharge prone because it's such a wide surface area there's no protection you grab the rifle and you, you touch it by accident and the light nds off definitely not would not run one of these on a night vision gun or if you do kind of nest it away so it's not as easy to uh, discharge. I would use like a hop button if you'd want a tape switch for your light. Used to, have, if you watch the video, used to have an O light on here for testing purposes. That guy is in forever RMA. I swear it's never coming back. Uh, but I'll do a review on that when that light finally does return. Up front, pursed. I already have a video on this. Link that up top right. Uh, it's a, it's a good laser as a non-primary laser device. Like if you're not intention or running night vision as a primary objective of a rubber rifle it's a good backup thing right very small out of the way it's probably the lowest no it is the lowest uh, night vision device so it stays well out of the way of uh, stuff got a functional laser no illuminator but once again this isn't your primary night vision gun if you'd run one of these i'd recommend like a, a d-ball or a hall of sun whatever Anyway, you can click up here for my night vision video as well. I get more into my opinion on what I think about this versus the other options on the market. Uh, I guess we'll look at this. Sling. VTAC sling. Uh, it's my preferred sling, but it's a sling. Just buy whatever works as I freaking break my glass table. Why for? I'm sure I'll, I'll bring this up since people might ask. Why 14.5? Because 13.7 wasn't available. I honestly prefer the 13.7 if you're going to pin and weld um you might as well get the maximum length about this and the with if you put the washers in uh you get your 16 inches with a dead air uh flash hider so wanted 13.7 couldn't find it 14.5 works just as well and i got a sick deal for fun i can kind of get into why 13.7 or 14.5 over other stuff um in my opinion if you're going to run unsuppressed for 13.7 to 16 inch is the optimal length you get really good lethality uh, good range, so to speak, because of your continued lethality at range. Um, yeah, you go shorter for something like a 12.5 or 11.5, you really lose all of that, which I just mentioned. And those guns, in my opinion, they need to be suppressed, right? They're so they're short and kind of more cumbersome. With this, you get a longer rail. Uh, those things are begging to be suppressed, and there's less benefit if you don't suppress those. If I'm not suppressing, like I said, I want to run a 14.5. I want to get uh, as much as I can around uh, out of the 5.56 cartridge. How about a, uh, well, that's a shorter end of thing. How about uh, 18 inch, for example? Uh, I actually don't have a problem with 18 to 20 inch rifles. Uh, mine is one of my favorite rifles, if not my favorite rifle to shoot, but this is more optimized around being a assaulter rifle. Uh, and it's more optimized around that, right? Four inches off the barrel, right? This is America. We love buying way too many ARs to optimize for different roles that'll never happen, right? So yeah, 14.5. Let's move on. All right, lower, Anderson lower. As I jokingly stated, there are some issues with it. I, these things are kind of, I think they're slightly all out of spec or something, but um, the, the trigger the, the trigger pins are kind of weird. One of them is super loose and one of them is super tight. The um, This area right here where the um, mag release goes is slightly out of spec. So when you use something like a Troy mag release, which really needs to be perfectly in spec, it doesn't work in binds, so. That being said, works fine with a uh, Ford Design Control mag release, which is now my favorite Ambi mag release. So I have those in all my rifles now. Down on the fence, Ambi Safety, just because I got them on sale. Rock River Arms um, Dual Stage Trigger. Is, was it as good as the MBT that used to be in here? No, but I have it, and it works. It's fine. It's a little heavier, but whatever. I got it. Going back here for more ambi life because I am genetically defect and am a left-hander. Uh, Raptor ambi charging handle. It's kind of just whatever. I just grab it because it's the one I'm comfortable with. Most of the usage of this thing is actually just deflecting gas that's coming back at my face. And uh, not much bills beyond that. Got a uh, MOE, what is this, SL or something? Stock. I just grabbed this stock because it's got a point for QD, which is all I really care about. Is it better than the other ones? I don't know. It's just the stock, man. Um, and that really is about it. All right, so hope you enjoyed that video. Some brass facts for you. Uh, going over my current rifle setup. If you enjoy this kind of content, just consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you much and really helps a small channel out like mine. I've been 
getting pr hit pretty hard recently with the shadow ban. Views dropped off a cliff. The videos are really not being shown to people anymore. It is what it is. I do this for fun. But hey, you hop down, comment, like, um, subscribe. All does a huge amount. And if not, whatever, man. Cool. All right. Stay safe. We'll see you around.